Hi, I'm Daz. Um, a couple of years ago I worked on my Kodar CR66 receiver. I've had this transmitter for some while. Um, it must be three or four years, perhaps five years. I've just rediscovered it having a clear, clear up. This um, is a valve transmitter. Amplitude modulation for 80 meters and 160 meters. Dates from the 60s. Um, this, it's a very compact compact unit indeed. And in fact, this is the mains power supply that goes with it, but there was also a 12 volt power supply or 6 volt power supply that went with it as well. So you could actually use it in a motor vehicle. Um, I've not really taken them apart yet and have a look to see what's inside or what condition it's in, but they look reasonable condition from the outside and everything looks fairly original. Um, I hope to sort of uh, work on these over the next uh, few weeks and uh, get it up and running and match it up with my Kodar CR66. Then I'll have a um, amplitude modulation um, transmitter to go with it. Just looking at the power supply, um, there's an on-off switch, there's a neon indicator and also there's aerial switching. You've got standby transmit and that switches the receiver to the aerial. And the net is to run the um, VFO, Variable Frequency Oscillator, so that you can adjust it and then beat it with the incoming signals to make sure you're on transmit frequency. Here's the rear of the power supply. You can see it uses Bell and Lee type connectors. That's what we use for TV aerial connections in the UK. Um, it's this Bell and Lee connection. There's also looks like an 11 pin valve socket on the back which provides the uh, low tension high tension to the transmitter. Here's the transmitter and um, there's a key uh, connection at the front for a Morse key. This is your Pi network. It looks like I'm missing one of the uh, little silver bits for the knob unfortunately but this is how you adjust the loading. There's your meter for adjusting resonance and checking your current. There's a neon which indicates modulation level, um, so you don't over modulate. There's a band switch that uh, switches it between a, an amplifier from the VFO or a doubler, which is, switches the doubler mode so that you can get onto 80 meters. And here's your gear dial for adjusting your transmit frequency. Notice it's marked here, not UK, for the top part of uh, 80 metres, of course. Here's the rear of the transmitter. Here's the um, RF output. It's a switch for AM or CW. I'm using it for Morse. There's the 11-pin connector again. Um, there's a very strange potentiometer there, a very strange fitting which is used to adjust the modulation level and that's the microphone input. This is designed for a crystal microphone so hopefully something from my tape recorder microphone stash might be suitable there. So just having a look inside we've got looks like a EZ81 rectifier and there's an OA2 which is a, a sort of gas voltage regulator <coughs> which is used to stabilise the VFO, I think that's 150 volts a voltage selector here as well, 245 and 255, that's interesting. Here's the uh, rotary selection switch, you can see the coax cables on it, and uh, they seem to, uh, yeah, if there's something wrong with this switch it looks like it might be a bit of a nightmare to fix. Must have met the contacts don't look fantastic, but uh, also interestingly enough there's a small uh, lamp being used as a uh, fuse for the HT, so that's quite interesting. So here's inside the transmitter. You've got an audio preamp valve and an audio output valve, and you've got an auto transformer here. So rather than drive a loudspeaker, it produces HT to modulate this RF output valve here to, in order to give you the um, amplitude modulation. These are two valves at EF 80s, and uh, they're used for the VFO and the doubler and the output valves are 6BW6. Um, so yeah, here's the tank coil, here's the two capacitors to go with the uh, Pi network there. 
back of the meter and a very small variable capacitor there for the VFO so that all looks in order. It doesn't look that dusty so I wonder if this has been dusted down or has some work done to it. Here's the underside of the chassis for the power supply and interestingly enough someone seems to have added a pair of capacitors to the transformer and I think that's going to nerf over that. So I wonder if that's something to do with modulation hum or something or bypassing RF to ground. But that's interesting. It's obviously a, a recent mod because these are fairly new um, capacitors. And you can see the transformer is a 275 by 275 at 100 milliamps. With 2.5 amps, 6.3, and another 6.3, and a 5 volts. And that's obviously for the rectifier. Someone's obviously replaced the mains cord as well because this is uh, obviously modern colours. So, but mind you, looking at some of the different screws I'm finding in this equipment, it's obviously been apart quite a few times. I think I'm going to check the resistors out. I'm going to swap out the electrolytics. So I want to use this and I want it reliable. So I'm going to swap them out and uh, go from there. Just in the process of recapping it, I've got an F and T cap that looks about the right size. I can't make my mind up whether to take the plastic off so I get a good earth contact or just put the earth on this separate lead that comes out the back at the moment. Um, there's another one to replace here. That carbon composition resistor 330 has risen to over 400k so I think I'll end up replacing that. I think it might be easier to take the switch out to get excess actually because I'm worried about breaking these uh, cables off. They look very much like TV coax to me. Probably um, very much uh, around in the 60s with the television revolution, I guess. I've also replaced the uh, 12K resistor. It's gone high to just over 14K, so I've replaced that. I'm now wondering whether it would have been better to take this panel off to work on this, because I've already had one or two wires drop off. OK, I'm back together now um, and uh, pop the valves back in. Just, just show you a few shots, just in case it's useful to anyone else. Anyway, I guess it's going to be time to switch on the power soon and uh, see if it uh, works or explodes. Um, it's got uh, two choices, I guess. Here's a circuit diagram for the power supply section. I've got a centre tap transformer and each half of the winding is connected to the anodes, the two anodes of the EZ81. Um, so basically every time this goes positive or this one goes positive, which it will each half of the mains, it'll provide a path to the smoothing capacitor. Notice this one, it's got its own transformer secondary for um, the valve heater so it puts less stress on it because it's isolated and not down to ground so there's less stress on the insulation. There's a fuse bulb um, first smoothing we've got a nice choke here and then a second capacitor and a choke provides a much better smoothing than a resistor will being in an inductor. Um, you need to keep the ripple low because don't forget this is an AM transmitter if you've got ripple on the supply it's gonna give you hum on your audio. The neon is interesting, it's got a, a uh, 8 microfarad capacitor across it and a pair of resistors and I suspect when we power this up we're going to see it flash in standby and go continuously on in transmit. Then we've got the OA2 which is a gas uh, valve, gas discharge and what that does is it works a bit like a Zener diode and provides a regulated 150 volts so it's got a gas in and it strikes, a bit like a neon really. Um, and then you've got the uh, resistor, dropper resistor as normal. There's a lot of interesting switching going on here for net and transmit. Um, what, what we've also got is a switch which switches the aerials, but the one thing that I can see that's missing is that there's no, no muting output for my receiver, but then my receiver hasn't got a muting input either. So um, that makes it a little bit difficult to uh, switch between transmit and receive, I guess. This is just the diagram. You can connect the valves for 12 volt or 6 volt operation and that's just um, so you can use it in a vehicle. With a, uh, There was a transistorized inverter available for this, so 
that's why you can link the valves out to uh, get the two voltages. I was just uh, fiddling around here um, what this would look like if this was solid state. Just for those who are not used to valves, so this is what it would look like if it was solid state. You've got a couple of diodes. Each half wave is going through the diode and producing positive here again through the fuse. Some moving capacitors and I've replaced the gas discharge device with a Zener diode and a resistor. So that's really what it would look like if it was solid state. So just uh, switching on again. Um, there we go. Yes, there we go. It does flash. Hey ho, I like that. That's a nice little neat touch. And if I flick it to transmit, it comes on continuously. You can see the HT now, 350. There's no load on it, it's going to be high. And net, there we go. Okay then, so. I've definitely got 150 volts. That's very accurate. <laughs> I think that's just a fluke. So standby, it disappears. Transmit, it should be there. Yeah, that looks good. Something in I certainly think by today's standards these plugs would not be allowed. <laughs> you pull it out of the transmitter end and you've got like 300 volts DC floating around. Certainly wouldn't meet modern standards, would it? Hey ho! Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting looking at the uh, power supply for this uh, transmitter. And uh, next job, I suppose, would be to look at the transmitter. another shot of the wiring. <laughs>